שלום חברים, שלום תלמדים שלנו. גמר חתמה טובה, maybe sealed for good sealing in the safer החיים. Yes, I for life. So here, 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 לחיים, לחיים, לחיים. Choice, לחיים, לחיים, for life, for liberty. או לעזאזל, לעזאזל, go to hell. What do you mean by this? Well, I'm going to talk about the scapegoat, right? I like to speak about the goat, what one may call the goat of God, was Yeshua Robeno HaMushiach, was Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus. Was he the scapegoat? There was two goats, the Day of Atonement. So here, we're at the eve right here. We're at the eve of the Yom HaKippurim. Also have to touch on that as well, what it's called. Many Yehudi, many Jews, even many of we, we the black Jews, we may refer to the day like others in Judaism as um, Yom Kippurim, but is that correct? I think many others are also picking up on that. Heal up to John J. Parsons, the Hebrew for Christians, are picking up on the fact that by tradition, The Day of Atonement is referred to as Yom Kippur, but that's not accurate, right? And accurate according to HaTorah. Have you not read what is written? Isn't it written Yom HaKippurim, the Day of the Atonements? So the difference right there is the singular and the plural, but also the word Kippur. Kippur, what does Kippur mean? Does Kippur come from the Hebrew Kafar? Then we have the Kofir, the Kofir. Right? Does it have anything to do with the Kufar? The Kufar? Right? In other religions or spirituality, they speak about the Kufar, the infidel, the Kufar. Then we also hear about the Kafir, the Kafir. You heard about Kafir Boy? Remember in school they used to have some of these books when things fall apart and other things talking about the Kafir Boy and how that's used as a, you could say a racial um, pejorative. You know, concerning black people historically on the continent that they call nowadays Africa, right? The kafir, kafir. So as a racial, we could say a racial pejorative epitaph right there as well. So all these things are connected, right? All these things are connected, the reason for the season here in this 2022 year, just to seal that up for the record right there. And so we've been meditating on this particular theme right here and also building up for the podcast. Also check us out on the Rastafari Israelites, the live stream, looking forward in the background, you know, getting some of the audibles and the presentations ready, ready, ready. You know, for this eve on the ear, I'm going to share the shaharit, the morning service, as well as the um, the evening service. But here we're on the eve. So the eve is interesting in, in traditional uh, Judaism, Yehudinet. It's interesting, you know, what is observed. Much of it is Torah related. Let's just say that much of it is Torah related, even amongst the popular, the European Jews, the Ashkenazim and the Sephardim. You know, many things are Torah related. There's some additions, and that's interesting to look at what additions are and whether these additions are right and accurate or whether they are inaccurate. But generally speaking, right, this is the Yom Kippur. More correctly, Yom HaKippurim. like to do a vlog where we break it down and get in some of the details so that the fellow Talmudim, fellow Chabarim, they can look into and investigate and take note and know this truth for themselves. That the more proper reference to the six of the seven appointments, the Mo'edei Yahuwah, HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, the appointments, the Feast of Jehovah, is known as Yom HaKippurim, in the fullness of the Hebrew, the Day of the Atonement. So the Kippur, right, to atone, to pardon, to forgive, but gets the Hebrew root, the Kafar, is to cover, right? It's almost like an insurance policy, right? Covering, right? Even the Kol Nidra, interesting, the Kol Nidra also brings it out to all vows, right? Mind me of like the old... Old Lang Zion, you know that song at the New Year's they be saying among the Gentiles, Old Lang Zion, remind me of, of what they call the Kol Nidra, the Kol Nidra. So these are various different points that are good to get into some of the details, the details of nullifying all the vows right, on that eve, 
you know, recitation in the Aramaic or vowels. What's that all about? You know, nullifying is that is that Torah compliant or not? Some very interesting reasonments on that. But let's get to the highlight matter right here. Now we want to call this particular vlog right here, right? Um, let's begin off with the Baphomet, right? Baphomet, the scapegoat, right? The scapegoat. You know, what is the scapegoat? Right? Who is the scapegoat? Is Yeshua the scapegoat? There's two goats. Actually, there's two goats. One is a live goat, right? And one is a dead goat, right? One is offered, La Yahua, and one is offered, La Zazel, La Zazel, right? La Zazel, kind of interesting right here because there's two goats, right? There's two goats. This duality right here, right? And the scripture says, Brit Chadasha, that Yeshua HaNotri, the Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, is said to fulfill all of the Old Testament types, right? You like the sacrificial types, which makes it very interesting. One is a live goat, right? And one is a dead goat. So which one is offered to which one? On the first slide where it says that, you know, the goat, the goat Lazazel, the goat Lazazel that goes to hell, Lazazel, also Lazazel, Azazel, you have you heard of Azazel? Who is Azazel? Azazel is a scapegoat, right? Azazel, right? Those who are into certain, how can we say, um, certain, um, what category would this be called? You know, if you look in some spirituality, some people might call it occultic stuff. You might have heard of the name Azazel, or if you looked at even think of the book of Enoch, the Ethiopic book of Enoch. So if you're into certain, as they say, spiritualism, spirituality, so forth and so on, no doubt you've come across some of these names. Some think of these as some angelic names, fallen angel names, so forth and so on. But is Baphomet, right, the one they call Baphomet, is the Baphomet the scapegoat? Or let's phrase it like this, why the Baphomet, as ones may be familiar with nowadays, the Baphomet, the Illuminati, the catch-all with that, but the Baphomet is the Baphomet, the scapegoat, right? And if Yeshua HaMoshiach, if Jesus Christ, the one who the world called Jesus Christ, according to the New Testament, the Brit Chadash, and according to Christianity, if he fulfills all of the Old Testament types of the animal, you know, sacrifices, right? Is the scapegoat Baphomet, Baphomet? Why the scapegoat may very well be, right? Baphomet, right? Even according to the Hebrew narrative. Now, today we have this whole imagery, you know, I think it was what it. Eliphaz, Eliphaz, Levi, and so forth and so on. If you want to get into all that, you know, narrative and history, that's all relative to it, right? But the whole connection right here, boom, here we go. There's two goats, right? <laughs> the two goats in the narrative. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture right here and just get a basic context right here of what we're speaking about here when we talk about the two goats. So we get to Leviticus. Right, we have Leviticus, Leviticus chapter sixteen. Now, Leviticus chapter sixteen is appointed for the, for the shacharit. Right, the shacharit is like the morning, the morning service. We have the shacharit, the morning service. So this is basically read. There's the evening service on the eve of Yom HaKippurim, which would be the ninth, the ninth of those ten days of repentance, the ten days of awe, the ten days. It's like the ten days to get make those adjustments. Right before the judgment, for the Yom Hadin, and the Day of the Atonement represent that judgment time. Because of the ancient teaching, it was believed that on the Day of the Trumpets, corresponding with Rosh Hashanah, right, is like that warning, the shofar, the ram's horn, it's like that warning. It's almost like a last call, right, before that, that 10 days. As Revelation says, you shall be tried 10 days. Then we come to the ninth of the seventh moon, right, which is known as Tishri in the latter uh, post-Babylonian um, calendar, but in the scriptural calendar, it's the seventh, the seventh month, right? 
we have the ninth, and the ninth is the eve, and the eve is that preparatory, right? That preparatory time. According to tradition in Judaism, there's the Kol Nidra recitation, which is very interesting to all vows, right? The cancellation of all vows from the previous year and looking forward to this new year. There's a very um, legal kind of aspect to this, right? And we talk about the day of the atonement, hakipurim, and kippur, kapar, the covering. So this is the cover, the B'nai Yisrael, the Israelites, for another year. It's like an insurance policy. Let's put it like that for once to get a basic contextual understanding. So there's the Ma'ariv, right, the evening service after sundown, right, after sundown, and the sundown represents the 10th. So the calendar Right, the schedule and the calendar needs to be understood. So evening and morning, we find that in Genesis. This means that like for the Shabbat day, the Shabbat day, the beginning of the Sabbath day, right, begins that evening, right, before that evening. So this is why once and once we gather, we gather for like the Friday, you know, in preparation for the Shabbat. So in preparation for the day, right, the evening is that real preparatory time. So it's the evening right, of the 10th of the seventh moon, right, the 10th of the seventh month, the 10th of the seventh moon, the 10th is the Yom HaKippurim, the day of the atonements, right, and the 9th is that time where the fast, many who seek to afflict their soul via fasting, so the Torah says to afflict your soul by tradition, by practice, ones will practice a 25-hour fast, so I, when sundown comes, right, on the 9th, Right on the ninth of the seventh moon, that technically becomes a tenth. Right, the evening, evening and morning is one day, twelve hours in the daytime. There's the half kaddish, there's the shema, there's the amida, there's al chet confession, there's the selichot, selichot like um, we know asking for the petitions for forgiveness. Right, and the piyutim, they're like poems and compositions. But here, we get this in Leviticus chapter 16. It gives us the regulation. Now, this part is what will be said in the dawning, the morning of the, when the sun comes up, when the day officially begins on the 10th. So from the eve of the 9th, going into the beginning of the 10th, and then on the day, the morning, right, shacharit, this chapter is what is read, right? And now, according to the practice of the rites and the rituals, we want to touch on this whole thing about sacrifice and this sacrificial system because of many interesting questions. Why do we have sacrifices here? Why does El Elohe Yisrael, the almighty power of Israel, right, and bring in the B'nai Yisrael, and bring in the B'nai right, Yisrael, Right, you know, out of Egypt, why is this sacrificial order in Leviticus brought in? Right, what is the Almighty Power Hashem seeking to do? Who started sacrifices? Did He command sacrifice from the beginning? Point that we must make clear, right, is that the purpose and the role of this system here, right, it had to be brought under law. In order to get rid of some things, you have to begin to regulate some things, right? And the sacrificial system, right? And systems based on the principles of the sacrificial system exist in all nations and definitely in Mitzrayim, right? In the Samai Tawi, in ancient Kemet, right? This ancient Egypt, this existed, the Hekapata, sacrifice that existed. And many different types of you know, the official, unofficial, there was many different denominations. We liken often ancient Egyptian worship, especially at, we could say, the Israelites in Egypt time and dispensation, right, to be like Christianity. We're not saying that the ancient Kemetics were so-called, quote, Christians, as we know today, but how it started out, like with the New Testament, we have Yeshua. He's a Yehudi. He's a Jew. Right. But then as things move further and further away from that ethnic people and as it becomes a religion and as Rome adopts this and as it goes on amongst even the Europeans, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, it starts to 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 um, what metamorphosize. It starts to change. Right. Some say it starts to degenerate. 
right? And this is what we bring into the equation, counterfeit Christianity, right? To imply that there's a true Christianity, right? Or a true way, a true practice. You know, we bring in the terms like Gentile Christianity among the nations to distinguish it from the Yehudi messianic movement of Moshe Heinu Yeshua Hanotri of Jesus of Nazareth. Right? So these are just related points right here just to put this into a kind of a context. Right? So we have this particular chapter here and it says, And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. Now here we're already at verse 8. But we zoomed in on this because the theme of the scapegoat. And we're asking the question, is the Baphomet, the Baphomet, right, that we may refer to today that is popularized today, does it have any connection with the scapegoat, right, that we find in the Bible, in particular in Leviticus chapter 16? And we're saying this right here on the eve, you know. This is kind of to supplement the podcast and the presentation there, but also to ask some questions, right? This is our chart, our tradition to ask questions, right? Unlike the counterfeit Christians and others into Bible-related belief systems and religions, you know, they like to make believe, but we, as the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah and as Yehudi in general, we like to ask these sort of questions. And for most of us, it doesn't take us away from the truth or the true faith, if we do have true faith, not assuming that all do, since it's a very personal matter. But there's some observances right, that we observe, that we recognize. And out of a certain type of, um, how can we say, love your brother as yourself. So there's some who are not as, quote, religious, even among Yehudi, among Jews. You know what I mean? So it can... You know, there's, there is, um, how can we say, there is um, a measure, right, a measure of, of the choice factor, right? So some might choose to believe, hey, this whole Baphomet thing, this scapegoat thing, this Azazel thing, this is all one. So when the Christian says, well, that Yeshua, the Messiah, he fulfilled this, are they saying that the Messiah is Baphomet? Right, that that the Messiah is Baphomet. Now, it's easy, right, especially for the unlettered and unlearned to just take these basics, right, and say, yes, that's what it is, you know. But as we study, let's study to shoot ourselves approved, right. So this is the first subject matter, right, of reasoning. I like to reason with the Chabarim, Talmudim, the fellow brothers and sisters on this particular matter, especially those who are in the studies, in the Bait Midrash, in the Rastafari Yeshiva, who are in the studies. Because others will bring in other ideas, which would be interesting, right? But it's not really, it's, it's, it's not related, it's non-cipher. They're interesting ideas, but they're not cipher, right? We're not just talking about the Baphomet and all that they do and that, you know, those who might worship the Baphomet. We're talking about why did the Hebrews, right, for the Day of the Atonement, they were commanded to have these two goats, Right? Two goats as this offering. And then one of the goats, right, right, is slayed, right, and is presented to Yahweh hey, Yahweh in the tabernacle. But the other one is led into the wilderness. Right? And that one that's led into the wilderness, well, before it's led into the wilderness, all the sins, right? All the sins the priest pronounces on on that goat that's going to be the scapegoat, Lazazel, puts all the sins, the fuckeries, the uckeries, the, all their wrongdoings, right? By transference, you know, speaking upon that, laying the hands on the head of that goat that's going to be led into the wilderness or, or that's going to go to hell. In modern Hebrew, we say Lazazel. Lazazel in the Torah is for the scapegoat, to the scapegoat, right? And... Lazazel in Hebrew, even modern Hebrew, refers to like to hell. It's like a, it's like a, one might say a curse word. It's not so much a curse, but it's like Lazazel. If we say Lazazel, it's like to hell, like to go to hell. It can be like uck or this or that. It's an interjection as we might use like what the heck, right? Like, you know, or go to hell. Say to somebody, go to hell, right? Lazazel, right? Or even say, Uck, you know, as ones will say, Lazazel. So this pejorative, right, this so-called, quote, curse or strong language tells somebody to go to hell. So to go to hell, 
right, in a basic Hebrew sense, right, the Gentiles say go to hell. We Hebrews say lazazel. Now lazazel means for the scapegoat. And the scapegoat, hmm, is the scapegoat, is the scapegoat Baphomet? The Baphomet? So let's go right here. So we have this verse right here in Leviticus 16 and 8. And Aharon, the high priest, the anointed high priest, Kohen Gadol, why it shall cast lots. Now casting lots is almost like put it in the right now sense. It's like rolling the dice, right? And Aharon, the high priest, shall cast lots, right? And casting of these lots upon two goats. So we have two goats. The goat, right? The goat of God is the goat of God, greatest of all time. But we have two goats, two greatest of all times. One lot for Yahweh, hey, for Yahweh, right? HaKadosh Baruch, Baruch Hashem. And the other lot, for the scapegoat. Now we're looking at this here. This is the KJV, and this is how it comes out in the KJV. But let's study right here. We have the H5799. Clicking on the H5799, what do we have? You see it right there. The H5799 is Azazel. Azazel. We have the Azazel. So the BDB, Browns Drivers Briggs, defines the Azazel as entire removal scapegoats. Right, A refers this refers to the goat that's used for sacrifice for the sins of the people. But now this goat that's used for the sacrifice for the sins of the people is not slaught. It's not slain. It's not slaughtered. It remains alive. Alright, the sins of the people are put on this goat, and this goat is led into the wilderness. Well, actually according to Ha Torah and according to the scripture. It's led into a land. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. It's led into a land, right? It's supposed to be led into a land that's not like inhabited, right? Where it says to make an atonement with him and let him go, right? So there's one goat, the live goat that's offered to Jehovah, to Yahweh, right? Which is slot, right? And then there's the other of the two goats, right, for the sins, the chatiyat, the lacking, the, the, the uckeries, the forfeitures, all the wrongdoings, right, of the people are laid on the azazel, lazazel, on the goat that lazazel, the scapegoat in the English King James Version, and in the Hebrew sense, the, the goat that goes to hell, right, the goat that is going to azazel. Right into the wilderness, right? I think as we get it more into the the context, I think it's led into a land, right? It's supposed to be led into a land that is not um, almost like inhabited, right? The other goat is led into a land that's not inhabited. So this is going through all the rites and the rituals. So here is the one for Azazel. Here's what it says concerning the Azazel goat or the scapegoat, right? Like that's put in qu uh, quotation marks, Baphomet, question mark, right? And Aharon shall lay both hands, right? So Aaron, he lays both hands. Let's do this right here. Aaron lays both hands, right? Let's bring up this one right here, similar to this. So we're, he lays both hands. He lays both hands on the Azazel, on the scapegoat, on the, quote, Baphomet, right? Upon the head of the live goat. So the live goat, interesting, in dyslexia, live is evil. In dysle dyslexia, if we take the word live and we mirror it, right, and it was reverse the letters, we have directly evil, right? But anyway, this is the live goat, the head, right? The head, the rosh, the rosh, the ras, the head of the live goat. And do what? And confess, Confess, right? Right here. Confess. Yada, yada, yada. Shall confess. You see, confess. Confess can mean in the Hebrew sense to give thanks to the Lord, to praise, also can mean to confess. Like, in a sense, so you look at the twofold. The Hitpa'el sense is to confess for chat, for akabi, for lack. 
confess the lack of the people, the fuckery, uckery of the people, the fornication of the crown of the king of the people. And also the word confess, yada, right? We get toda, like to thank, thanks offerings to give thanks as well. But now the context is where we look at the context, but literally we're looking at the Hebrew, right? And we have literally the use, right, of the hand, right, to hold out the hand. Right? Therefore, notice he puts both his hands on the head right, of the live goat and confesses over him all the iniquities, the avon, right? avonot, right? avonot, 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 right? the avon, avon, the avon, the avonot, the perversities, the pravities, the iniquity, the guilt, the punishment, the iniqui of iniquity, of moral perversity, the guilt of iniquity, moral perversity, the guilt. Right? The guilt of the condition, guiltiness, right? Now is to rest on the Baphomet or the Azazel, on the Azazel, the, the scapegoat, the live goat. The consequence, right? So it's like a transference, right? There's a sympathetic so called level of this. The punishment for iniquity. Now, this word right here, here, here is a noun masculine. You can see to break it down simply is perversity. Right? That is like moral, the sense of it is moral evil. But now after the 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 colon and the hyphen, you see what says fault, iniquity, mischief, punishment, sin. This is how the word elsewhere in the King James Version may be translated. So you can see how ones might get the wrong impression, depends on what word is used. But here's where we go to the roots, here's where we go to the source code, here's where we go to the Hebrew, the H D to get a good clarity. Simply put, this is the Avon, Avon, right? The Avon, Avonot, right? The iniquities of the Bene Yisrael, of the sons of Israel. For once over, the, it does mean sons of Israel, just you see that right there, the Ben, right? Bene, Bene, in the plural sense, constructive, Bene Yisrael, of Yasharala. And, and not just that, but all their transgressions, all their Pesha, Pesha. Pesha is an interesting word, transgression. It's like all their felonies. <laughs> we update it in the legal sense, all their felonies. You know what a felony is. You catch a felony, right? Transgression, rebellion. Transgression, right? Against individuals, the nation against nation. But in this context, the transgression, the felonies against Hailehim, right? Against Eloheinu, against Ainai Power, against Hashem, right? In general, right? And then we go with the guilt, not just what they did, right? Because what you did, what we done did, but there's also the guilt. How it can rest on one's conscience, right? It's the guiltiness rests upon them conscience, right? The punishment, right? But notice there's also an offering, right? The word is used as an offering, right? For that, right? That's like we have the transgression offering. But Strong's bringing out best right here is revolt, right? The revolt, how they were rebellious. My rebellious. So the whole nation, we can say the sons of Israel, we the sons of Israel, we catch a felony, a big felony. Right? The biggest felony in the universe. Right? A universal felony. Rebellion, sin, transgression, trespassive. Right? Of who? Of the Bene Yisrael. Right? In all of the sins. Now notice, in all their fukuri, chata'a. Or the chata'a, chata'a. Now chata'a, simply they say sin, sin offering. But when we get to the very root, like let's go down here. Let's get to the, it's from this, chata, chata, the word for sin. BDB says to sin, to miss, to miss the way. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is like caught lacking in the biggest way, right? Yisrael, Yasharala here, we caught lacking in the biggest way. You know, people caught lacking, this is the biggest way. Right, fuckery, uckery, right, fuckeries, right, going wrong, incurring guilt, forfeiting, right, forfeiting. You know, it's talk about assets, seizure, and forfeiture, right, in modern Gentile Babylonian law, yeah, right, but before that, this, right, purify from uncleanness by now. Here's what's interesting, you know, so we call the chatiat or the sin is the is the is the uck, as that word is used, the fuck. Right? People say, I don't give a fuck. But that's why you still got guilty, guiltiness on your conscience. Right? There's the offering for the uckery. It's almost like, um, like divine the Hebrew karma, is a sense. Right? When people say, I don't give a uck. Right? But 
here in the Hebrew sense it's reverse. Once you know that you've done the uk, right, you have to give the offering that's called the uk to cancel the uk. So if you don't give a fuck, right, that fuckery rests, you know, the guiltiness, right, the consequence of it rests psychologically. Why do you think people caught up on drugs and so many different things, escapism, right? They're trying to run from something. You keep running and running and running away, but you can't, right? We can't really run away from ourselves, right? And the God power, right, is that sustaining power in ourselves, right? Even if we do not recognize it, but we can't run. We can't run away from ourselves. Purify. So the purify from the uncleanness is to give a uck about the uck you done did. You got to give a uck about the uck you done did. Just to kind of explain, you know, the basic principles of the sacrificial system. And even though, right, we're in a Brit Hadasha. And no longer the debtors or the blood sacrifice, not blood, the, the blood of the sacrifice. Because we don't really have blood sacrifices. People always wrongly, you know, interpret that from the Hebrew. We don't have blood sacrifice, but it's the blood of the sacrifice. All those things, the debtors, right? We're in a new, you know what I mean? We're in a new um, al kidan, a new word agreement. But the principles, right? It's that object lesson that's the key. Right? It's that object lesson that's the key. In other words, sometimes we need the outer like lesson or demonstration right, of these things that are going on on the inner side, you know, on the inside. So sometimes one's put a formula on the board right, that explains the operation that we need to do. Right, even on the inside, right? So in all of their uckeries, all their sin, their fuckeries, right? Putting them, look at this, putting them where? So all of this, right, is now put, right, by Aharon, by the high priest, by the Moshiach, because Aaron is the Hebrew Christ in the wilderness, in the camp. And we say Christ in the sense that Christos comes from the Moshiach. Right, even it's proven in the Brit Chadasha right there. We have found the Messiah that's being interpreted Christ. So there we have the first Christ according to the Hebrew scripture would be Aharon. Right? When I say the first one, the first one so overtly named. Let's put it like that. Overtly named. Right? Because I know some of the Talmudim Chavarim are good. They will make these links even prior to, even with Moshe in a sense. But we know that according to the order. Right, according to Torah, right, he is that one. He is the Kohen Gadol. Now he puts all of this now, right? He's our priest, our high priest, right? He puts all of our uckeries, our sins, our transgressions, and all of our uckeries, our guiltiness, our moral perversities, all of that, right, on the head of the live goat, right? The scapegoat, the goat Lazazel, right? The quote. Baphomet, Baphomet, and does what? Sends him away, right? Sends him away. Right? Don't slay him, right? He's not given to Yahweh, hey, to Yahuwah, right? It's the other goat. But this other goat, the second of the goats, or the live goat, is now sent away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Verse 22. And the goat, now let's bring out the word goat. Right here, we have the goat as the sa'ir, sa'ir, right? The sa'ir, sa'ir, sa'ir. What's a sa'ir? Sa'ir here, BDB, the hairy he goat, the he goat. Right? It's a buck, it's the buck, right? Keep it a buck, right? It's a noun masculine, it's a sacrificial animal. Some liken this, you know, to the satyr, the satyr, you know, they say Sagittarius, a satyr. This may refer to a demon possessed goat like the swine of Gadara, right? That's in the Matthew chapter 8, verses 30 to 32. We're not going there just yet, but keep that on the record. The Strong's bring out the shaggy, shaggy, the he goat, by analogy of fawn. Now, what's interesting about this word sa'ir, sa'ir, elsewhere in the Bible or the translation KJV, this Hebrew term, Right, that basically means uh, the male buck, a goat. Right, can also mean devil. That's where they get devil. That's where they throw in the devil. The devil come from the Greek. Right, they throw in devil. Right, literally, directly, it's a goat. My implication is hairy. Also, a kid. Right, a kid. How many kids you got? Right, kid. A kid is a goat. 
right? And sometimes a goat to kid is sacrificed or is sent away, like lazazel, right? Rough, rough or satire, right? Well, that's more in the um, Gentile, like mythologies and in there, you know, and their so-called spirituality, the Elohim Acharim, the other Elohim, the other gods of the other nations, other people, their spiritual interpretation, so forth and so on. But see, Yahuwah gave this to the children of Yisrael, right, to bring them up, right, by the stage right here, to regulate what they already were doing, right? Like I said, if you want to change some things, right, or really anything, you got to bring it under law. Notice that all these people who complain about even the law of the Gentiles, oh, the Babylon law, oh, look at they do this in the law. Mm. Notice the law checks and regulates everything. You heard some people say that money rules everything around them. Nah, 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 nah. Money don't rule everything. It's the law. The law rules everything. See, see one's on peep that yet. It's the law that rules everything. And secondarily, it's faith in that law that rules everything. So it's the law that rules everything. Like right? people say money rules everything around them. But the reality is it's the law that rules everything. Right? And it is those who believe or have faith or credit or admit that law as true, right? As credible, right? That was it faith about work, that work that law. Right? That rules everything around you. See, that's what leads to, they say, the police do. And it's because they have guns and weapons. Listen, you know, the lost sheep who got guns and weapons. Some of them have military training. How come things can't get along? Because it's something deeper going on here. Right? There's something deeper going on here. This is why they can't get it on here. You know what I mean? Because it's something, it's the law that rules everything. Check this out. What really makes, when they say stop in the name of the law, right? When they say stop in the name of the law. All right now that person's name is not law but they are speaking about like their you could say their torah the torah of the world their law all right their direction instruction do they have faith in it do the police and the military and the army and the courts and even you yourself if you are honest right like your highness do you have faith in their law you must see you can have a positive faith or a negative faith you can have that negative faith. You really don't believe it. You know, maybe they made it up and, and they're corrupt and this and that. But the negative aspect is like, I don't want to go astray of that because you know there'll be consequences. Like they say, live and direct. There'll be consequences to the violation of their law. But the people who uphold the law in the system, right? We're talking about Baphomet, right? We're talking about this system of things. Now notice that this... um. Lazazel, right? The scapegoat is going to be sent where? It's going to be sent into the wilderness. What do we refer to this here North Country as? You know, in the Western Hemisphere, the wilderness of North America, right? Even I think if you read further, it says to a land that's not inhabited, right? Now we know that this continent was inhabited, right? But then there was parts of this continent that was still like a wilderness. Right? And even coming to the latter days and time, that resurrection of our once lost, now found black and brown people, Afro-Shemitic, Afro-Asiatic, Asiatic black man, we say the wilderness of North America. Right? So where was that goat? Where have we encountered this, this, this um, baphomet, baphomet, here in the wilderness, right? in exile, right? in exile in the wilderness, once lost, now found? Talk black, beta Israel, to I and I and I. Talk black, beta Israel. Yes? Right? Are you beginning to peep the connection? So it's not the it's not money rule everything. Money is just a tool. Money is a tool, and it mainly is tools, right? It's tools for those who understand, right? And peep the game, right? And get that, you know, get that reptilian, you know, got that reptilian in check. You know what I mean? Or it's used, money is used as a tool against the fools. We don't peep, you know, the real higher level, so to speak, of what's really going on. Think about what I said. Money, money don't rule everything. You might think money rules everything, but it's the law. So when Yahweh, right, gave the Bene Yisrael this law, right, and even concerning the sacrifices, it was to regulate them, right? First of all, to bring it under you know, regulation, 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 right? And then to bring it to the fulfillment, right? And also education. It was for regulation and education, 
right? Regulation and education. Because other peoples, even ancient Egypt, they were sacrificing. You know, we can go way back to the first times and, you know, early people, not just the ancient comedics, but early people, early humanity. We've been in evolving. I'm not talking about all that pseudo what people want to think about darwin and 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 western gentile evolution from monkey business or chimpanzee or ape we're not talking about that we're talking about evolving more on the psycho spiritual aspects right evolving now there's also certain other evolutions from the melanated you know what i mean you know say from from the black to all the multitude of the other nationalities from that dominant seed and gene we can talk about that right but even that took place you know um we say on a different you know on a different vibe we're talking about here the evolution of consciousness right so to help the children of israel who yahweh had chosen Right? He gave them this law and regulation. Right? He gave them this law and regulation, right? which was based on their present situation. Right? In other words, it's not like they were not sacrificing or caught up in all different kinds of sacrifices in Mitzrayim, in the Samai Tawi, in Kemet. Right? There's all sort of different denominations in Kemet. It's like today, there's all, if you want to be a Christian, there must be hundreds of different denominations, type of Christians you can be. Have you thought about that? Right? But they all will say the same basic themes. That's what ancient Egypt was and had become. Of course, there was the official, whoever the pharaoh or the dynasty was, they had their particular belief or belief system. Right? And that's like going along with the system. Right? But there was a certain amount of so-called religious freedom right, for many of the different peoples and beliefs in ancient Mitzrayim where the Hebrews and the sons of Jacob, a.k.a. the children of Israel, were, right? But now, note this also in the Exodus narrative. It seems as though they had religious freedom for everybody except for the Bnei Yaakov, except for those who believe like the Hebrews. When I say the Hebrews. I'm not saying the Hyksos. I'm looking at Hebrews, right, to be spirituality, Right? When you cross over from a one, the, 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 the general um, belief. Like, for, for example, most people believe that money rule everything around them. Right? When you recognize that it's law and it's faith with work in that law, that rules everything. Right? So the people who uphold the system, the present Gentile, Anglo-American world order and system of things, whether one would call Babylon, whether one want to call it the inferiority posing as white supremacy, still it's the law. It's that sense of law. And not only do they believe positively in their law, but the subjugated people believe negatively in the law. Right? You know, the positive and the negative. Positive, they're proactive about it. They believe in it. Or you broke the law. Right? Others be like, oh yeah, they be, they be locking us up, they be having all these laws, but they, they can't, they're afraid, they try to avoid it, but they know when they caught, they got caught, they can't, there's nothing to oppose it. Right? There's nothing to oppose it. So in Mitzrayim, right, the children of, you say, Jacob and the Hebrews, right, they did not have their religious, right, their religious observance, their point of view. Right? And therefore, because they could not practice their point of view, by and large, many of us practice a lot of other things. Right? And we can prove that even in the Exodus narrative where Moshe asked, he said, let us go and just worship Yahweh you know, for a couple of days and we'll be right back. Right? And, and, and Paro, the great house, and the Sutanet, Sutan Bat got vexed. Was like, what? What the hell? You're lazy, man. You need to work some more. Right? They were only asking for a religious holiday. This is what a lot of folks, I'm surprised, a lot of these people looking over Exodus and trying to figure out this and that, they forget that the children of Israel were asking for a religious holiday. You know, like when you want to get a day off from work for a religious observance, and you notice that everybody else gets off for all their kind of observances, but here you ask for something, you know, to get off, and, and, they, and you and your kind, Nah, nah, nah. And when you ask for it, there's a consequence that now you get more work. It's almost like you get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't want to do that. I'll get in trouble. I don't want to say that. So you worship him maybe in your heart, but then you, you're doing the outer thing. It's like people who might not believe in, in Christmas, you know, Santa Claus and all of that, and might not believe in Easter eggs and bunny rabbits. They might go along with it because of their position in society or where they work because they don't want to offend other people. So they're, they're doing what the Gentiles, what it says, when in Rome, 
Rome is connected with Esau, y'all, right? Not just from the black Hebrews and the Hebrew Israelites, but also from the ancient Yehudi, the ancient Jews, even we the black Jews. This is where the other Jews got that from. They'll say that Esau, right, equals Rome, right? So we refer to Rome as Esau. So when in Rome do what the Romans do, right? And notice that was a brother right there. So notice what it says right here, and the goat shall bear, shall bear, the bear means like the nasa, nasa, lift up, lift up, to bear up, to carry, shall endure, right? You know, to carry off, right? By that act, even forgive, right? That goat, the goat that is led away, the baphomat goat has a lot to do with the forgiving of call Yisrael, of Yasharala, their sins, their uckeries, their transgression, their guiltiness, their moral perversity. Isn't this interesting? Right? Isn't this interesting, brothers and sisters? You know? But it goes on. It says, upon him, all their iniquities, right? The avon, avonot, right? Avon, avonot, right? The avonot to a land not inhabited. And he shall let go, right, let go. Now notice the word let go. He shall shalach, right, let go the goat. Now notice how the goat is referred to as a scapegoat, as we pointed out, and also as the goat, right, as a scapegoat and as the goat into the wilderness. But notice the, the goat will be upon him, right, that Baphomet type goat will be upon him all their iniquities, Right into a land that's not inhabited, right? And he shall let the goat, uh, uh, he shall let go the goat, right, into the wilderness. So here we have the basics, right, of this Baphomet, right, of this Baphomet likeness right here. I know a lot of ones when they see this, they might be a little scared of this. They go, oh, oh, that's that's the evil, that's such and such. Okay, mm hmm. Good over evil. So what was being done right here for, for Yisrael, was it good? What, what was being done here for Yisrael, was it good? Yes, it was good for Yisrael. All right, so it was good. What was being put on the goat and what the goat was supposed to represent, was that good in a sense? Well, it the sins on the goat was basically evil. It was the evil, right, of the children of Yisrael mm -hmm, that would be placed on this goat. Right on this goat, and I know some people think we're just speaking um, physically or literally. Right, we're also speaking metaphysically and and figuratively. We're speaking in the spirit of what's going on. Right now, notice this even with the stars. Right, the five point star. Right, there's one that's live. Right, there's a live goat, and there is the dead goat. Right, the dead goat, the sacrifice goat. Right, is to Jehovah. Now, remember, Yeshua fulfills, right? It says that Yeshua fulfilled all of the Old Testament types. We look at these sacrifices as types, as typology. And Yeshua is said, Robeno, right? HaMoshiach is said to fulfill all of these Old Testament types right here. Let's do this right here, brothers and sisters, right? We're going to turn to that right there. But let's look into this right here from another perspective. Let's look at the Azazel. Right, the Azazel aspect. So here, in going to this narrative right here again, let's look at this. So we have scapegoat first appears in the Bible, right in the Old Testament in Leviticus, in Leviticus in translation in King James Version, Leviticus 16 and 8. Right, so we have Azazel. What is Azazel? Right, as we said right here, Azazel, entire removal. Now this is not the direct definition. Right here, but this is more the context of what is represented in the text, right? Referring to the goat used for a sacrifice for the sins of the people. But now notice this kind of quote sacrifice, end quote, is not like the other sacrifices where it's killed, it's deaded on. Right? Then they say the meaning is dubious. But here we say that the strong, sometimes the BDEB Browns Drivers Briggs brings it out better. And sometimes strongs bring it out better. But both of them, you know, as points of reference is what we use right here. Here it says the goat of departure. <laughs> the goat of departure. Also called the scapegoat. Right? And this word Azazel, right, throughout the scriptures or the translation is translated as scapegoat. 
And I think it's about how we use this term scapegoat. You're trying to make me a scapegoat, <laughs> right? Or he's a scapegoat or so-and-so is a scapegoat, right? A scapegoat. You might think like a goat that escapes, right? But this goat that escapes, so to speak, is, is, is carrying what? It's carrying all of the uckeries, right? Let's look at Baphomet for a moment. Right, this this symbol, this 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 um um this type, right? You know this type right here. Does it represent the uckeries? Does it represent the sins, the transgressions? Could something like this Baphomet really represent the sins and the transgressions? Right, according to the Leviticus chapter sixteen, the Day of the Atonement's type, the Yom Hakipurim type. Mm. Azazel, removal, scapegoat. More better a goat, right? A goat for going away. A goat for going away. Right? This is the goat for going away. Bye bye. Go away, goat. Right? Bye bye. Go away, goat. This is the goat for the going away. Let's put this as a still right here. Right? Now, something that's interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this on the screen and you know, if we can notice the goat, we see the horn, we see the star, the, the solve on one, and 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 coagula on the next, or coagula, and what that means, we can once can get into that. We're not we're not there, right? We're not we're not there. We're right here, here, here. So let's get into Azazel. As we mentioned before, right? As we mentioned before, let's actually do this right here because I think it's important to kind of give a demonstration which one are we seeking to go to right here let's go to the translate for a moment right let's go to translate let's 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 put this right here and just show you what we mean let uh what was it let uh what is the zain za why right za zel right la za zel right the hebrew Right, we're in the Hebrew, the Hebrew. Let's translate from the Hebrew. Damn it. Look at that. You see right there? Damn it. That's le azazel. Le azazel. 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 It means a sense of damn it. This is azazel. Right? This is so in modern Hebrew, if we say like, you know, lazazel, 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 right? For basically we're saying for the scapegoat. In the translation from King James Version, it would be like for the scapegoat. Right. But in its meaning, like we say now, like so we have the, the religious figure of speech translative, but we have the actual uses like damn, damn it. Right. Lazazel. Right. Right. Lazazel. Right. We have Lazazel. Darn it. But you see the last one there to hell with it. So in Hebrew, if you're saying to hell with it, Lazazel, you're saying for the scapegoat. Think about it. The wilderness, to a land not inhabited, to hell with it, for the scapegoat, for for hell, for a land not inhabited. Is the land not inhabited hell? So we talk about it's been like a living hell <laughs> in this wilderness of North America. Can you see that sense right there? So this is just, oh, let me let you hear it. La Azazel. You got that? La Azazel. La Azazel. You, you heard that? Once again. La Azazel. Which means like, damn it. It called me like bloody. Like bloody. Like like the English use the word bloody. Right? And also like go to hell. You know, you know, you know, lek. You know. <laughs> Leka, la Azazel. Like go to hell or just la Azazel. La Azazel. Once again. La Azazel. Once again. La Azazel. Once again. Once again, La Azazel. Okay, so you get the idea right there. This is just to bring out a fuller full of what we're speaking about right here, right? To bring out a fuller full. And so here we have Azazel. You see, Azazel. So when it says for the scapegoat, La Azazel. It's for the scapegoat, for the goat of removal, right? Now, when we break this down, right? We break this down, it's from two words, right? There's some false, some. Um, you know, um, etymo not false, but there's some other etymologies of it because we have azaz, azaz, azaz means like to be strong in a sense. It has a sense of, you know, meaning to be strong, right? To be strong. 
But here, the breakdown here, the H5795 is A's. A's. You remember Sa'ir? Sa'ir is a buck. Like a, like a male goat that they would say like a buck. Right? But what we have here in Azazel is two words. Right? We have A's. A's. Right? And Azal. A's and Azal. Right? Not really properly related to Azaz. Right? Because Azaz... Right, Azaz mean like strong and powerful, and there was a man named Azaz of the tribe of Reuben. But what we're speaking about right here, 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 right, is the A's. The A's is a female goat. Hold up, the two goats are supposed to be male goats, right? Right, wasn't the two goats supposed to be male goats? But there was a goat that was being sent, La Azazel, right? And then we look at the Baphomet. Let's look at the Baphomet. And the Baphomet seems to have breastesis here. Some people say that the Baphomet is both male and female. And, but you can clearly see on all the pictorials, right, at least of what is described, right, by those who, who are of Azazel or those who rep that, you know, you could say that aspect right there, right, you see the breastesis is. Right, you see the two breastesses. You, you, you can clearly see on all of the. You can look it up for yourself. But what's clear, even from right here, you see the breasts. But now, when we break down the word from the Hebrew, from the two words in Hebrew, we have two words. We have ah, uh, we have a's, a's, a's. What's a's? A's is a female goat, a she goat, right? A goat, a kid, right? And then here it says. A she goat as a strong goat. But notice what it says, but masculine. So the as singular is a female goat, right? But when it's in the plural, right? Azim, azim, it's masculine, which also has the elliptically for goats here, right? So it's like a she goat, right? It's a she goat. It's like a kid, but it's being like kid like a she, not he. Then we have the second word is azal. We have azal. Azal in the Hebrew means to go away. So what's interesting is saying that this other goat, right, is to be sent away. Let's bring this out right here. And the other lot, right, the other lot, the other goral. Goral is like a lot, a pebble, you know, like almost like rolling dice, so, so to speak, you know, like a stone, right, or portion. My destiny, you know, like when you roll the dice, that's what the, the idea is. If we get into the Hebrew of this for ones and ones to see this a little better, let's go down here. Let's go down here. So you see the Tanakh down here. This is the word right here. You see, La Azazel. It's the same we just showed you on the Google Translate. La Azazel, right? La Azazel. And if we scroll down here, we have the same word, La Azazel. So we have A's, two parts, and Azal. Right, A's, which is the she goat, as we showed you. The A's is the she goat, right? And then we have Azal. Azal is to go away. So what it's saying is that this other goat that all the Ukaris of the Bene Yisrael, the Israelites, is put on, is going to be sent away. Right? The sense is is of and is for Azazel. But then Azazel breaks down to a she goat sent away. So there's a goat being sent to the what? She goat being sent away to this land. And then in the plain use of it, it's like damn. It's like damn. You know, you know, this interjection, damn. Uck, one might say. Lazazel, go to hell. Right? Go away, Lazazel, go to hell. Be used up. Right? The sense of Azal is to be exhausted, to be gone, to be evaporated. Or a sense of it can mean to go to and fro. The Strong's definition says a primitive root to go away, hence to disappear, to fail, to gather about, to go to and fro, right? Then it says, um, but it says, but the word is rendered by many from Uzal, Uzal, right? By others from Yarn, right? To be gone, to be gone in the sense of to be spent. And somebody says, I'm done, I'm done, it's gone, it's spent, Right, it's spent. So it just used a reference right there. So we get the general sense 
Hopefully we get the general sense and we see the word right there being highlighted, la azazel, right? Which is one and the same as what we showed you right here. La azazel. La azazel, right? La azazel, right? So we have damn it, damn it, darn, to hell with it, right? La azazel, right? To hell with it, but the context can also be used like to go to hell. Now you're telling somebody to go to hell. Right or like it's it's gone to hell, you know it's gone into this wilderness. It's spent. It's used up. Damn, bloody, fuck. This is the idea of la azazel, right? So that's so why we didn't say that it's a curse word. You know, people say a curse word, but then we have to look at the context. So here, let's just go through a quick meta, a meta five cycle, right? Of the azazel, right? What about this azazel right here? What is about this Azazel? Now, this is a pictorial representation, right? Here, we're talking the, about the two goats, right? Here, we're speaking principally, right, of, of the goat, right? One goat, remember, one goat is sacrificed to Yahweh, right? And the next goat is sent out into the wilderness, right? Now, what's interesting is that people might look and say, well, what is written, right? What is written? If you go from the bottom, right, from, from the beard of the goat, the bottom, and you go counterclockwise, the Hebrew letters is Leviathan on this one. Leviathan or Leviathan. That's what's written on this one right here, going, going from the beard on the bottom, going um, counterclockwise. But Azazel, and it says, And Aaron shall take the two goats. Let's go back to two goats. Shall take the two goats and set them before Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, at the door of the tent, right, of meeting, the Ohel Moed. And Aharon shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for Yahweh, for Jehovah, and the other, La Azazel, La Azazel, right? And Aharon shall present the goat, right, the Sa'ir. Right, the male goat, right, upon that the lot fell for Yahweh hey, and offer him for a chatat, a chatat, a sin, a akri offering. Right? But the goat on that the lot fell, Lazazel, for Azazel shall be set alive, Lifne Yahweh hey, to make atonement, right? To make atonement for him. To send him away, right, La Azazel, for Azazel into the wilderness. Leviticus chapter 16, right, verses 6, verses 10, and verse 26. Some of the key, some of the key verses. So metaphy cyclically, what are we speaking about metaphysically right here, here, here? Right? And some of these two goats, the two goats of Leviticus chapter 16, right? They signify the twofold operation, right? in consciousness that attends the putting away of lack, the putting away of uckery, the putting away of missing the mark, of forfeiture, sacrificing one goat, right, as a chatat, la yahwa, right, as a sin offering, a lack offering, a uk offering to he who be who he be, hakadosh baruchu baruch Hashem, it signifies the process, signifying the process of uplifting and refining the energies that lay in back of all action. So when we see an action, something else is going on that's not seen, that's moving the action, right? So we're touching to the action behind the action. I mean, the, you know, the action behind the, behind the action that we're able to see, physically, there is the action and the energies right the elementals right and have been used these have been used for ra 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 -a, as we say in the hebrew used for evil for bad for ill for unkind for hurt for harmful these energies actually the energies themselves speaking energetically right are good the energies are told and must be refined Right, that's a sense of purifying, refining it, and elevate it and lift it up, right, to the spiritual, right, the psycho spiritual expression, 
right? So we talk about the letter of the law. There's the letter of the law, and then there's the figure of speech. There is the the physical, and there's the metaphysical, right? Right? There's the natural, right? And there's the psycho spiritual. So we see about the, we, we by crossing over from the physical, right? From the physical to the metaphysical or from the natural to the spiritual, or from the literal to the figurative, this is what it means to be a Hebrew in truth. This is what I'm seeking to bring out and to share, right? Right here, right? So these energies, the energies in back of all action, and these energies that's in back of all action, it's like looking at web pages and thinking the web pages is, is all, it be all, but actually it's the code, the, getting to the source code. Right? Getting to the source code. Right? These energies are good and they must be refined, purified. Right? Purify your heart, purify your mind, and elevate it. Go to higher heights. Right? Spiritually evolve, right? To the psycho spiritual expression, right? The higher expression, the spiritual expression, we're in consciousness. And the organism, the carbon, the korban, the carbon organic structure, we say the body, the temple. Hebraically, we'll say this is the, the true korban, right? The korban, the korban, as we have in Romans with chapter 12, right? Um, um, be living, the living sacrifice. You have to understand the principle of the living sacrifice. Not the dead is, but the living sacrifice. That one may become perfect, right? Tamim, tamim. Even as Ha'av is Tamim, perfect in the sense of complete. Right? There's a completeness in this rite and ritual that's often overlooked because people get caught up, right? or they are carnal, fleshy minded, right? and it's the outer. Right? You know, they see this outer here and it becomes like a boogeyman right? because they have the foolish faith, faith with seeing. Right? They say, they say um, seeing is believing. Right? Right, yeah, it's be like even, right? So they get caught up, right, on that carnal mind, that fleshy mind, that natural, that unregenerated. In other words, it's almost like to say unevolved, psycho spiritually speaking, right? In in how they see and how they process, you know, how they process this reality. It's so always spoke about the whole myth and reality there. Right? And then even propose that there's a, a mixed level of it. And one should not just be dismissive of the mythos because the ancients, many of them were seeking to express certain things right, that go beyond, like, like even today, go beyond simple expression. We, we talk about horsepower. Notice how fast a car goes, they say horsepower. So even today, sometimes they still use these terms. Right? These terms are still referential terms, even though other more scientific terms can be used. We understand it. Right? So we're using these, these, the, these literal, natural terms that we first became acquainted with as human beings. Now to refer to our technology, you know, how fast it goes, we're still comparing it with the natural horses. But we don't actually literally mean my, the horses, when we talk about horsepower in the car, somebody here that they'll think that a bunch of horses, many horses are in the engine, right? And this is where, this is where we say the mythology or the religious motif, you know, or the spiritual we find in the Bible goes off, right? As we understand, as you should understand horsepower, even in a modern car, you understand what it means. It's not talking about literally any horses. This is what we're seeking to convey here. But if you think that when we say horsepower, there's a bunch of little horses, right, that are in the modern vehicle somehow. You don't see them, but they're there because they said horsepower. It's got this many horsepower. So there's this many horses in this car. If you think that, that is where so-called religion, <laughs> you know, that is so-called Babylon. That's the confusion, right, of, of, of these basic scientific precepts and principles. So that, there's, there's even a science to the Hebrew. This is what we're seeking to bring out even right here. Right? So Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, which is, which is the applied science, how this is to be applied. As we said that these energies are good, that one must refine them, right? And the outer example was used, right, as an object lesson as we have even in HaTorah, right? But they were to grow in grace and in the knowledge, right? So he put all those things under law within the covenant. He said, you people who I chose, who I'm going to make big up above all people, right? If you keep to this contractual agreement, it's like any contract that person has on anything. It can be just 
and the principle in principle can be a basic contract you have right the same principle exists in in a contract that you may have you know with um multi-million billion dollar contracts still exist principles that's the same as in your basic utilities your phone bill that the same principle applies right if you don't fulfill your part of it right but if you do you get that service whatever that service is you see what i'm saying so sending the other goat the azazel Mine, you can say the proverbially the by format goat, the one removed, separated, sent away out into the wilderness. This is be speaking, this is a way of saying denying, right? Denying, like de denying this error. You see, it could have been slaught and slaughtering something, even the animal sacrifice as a type, because people were sacrificed animals all around, even in ancient Egypt. But now here, the Israelites coming out of Mitzrayim. They are put in this, how can you say, in this in this strict covenant, right? This covenant. If you will sacrifice, as Leviticus says, you would do this and this and this. Now, if you do sacrifice, you don't do this and this and this. Well, you're in a kind of trespass. You're in violation, right? And there may be consequences for that. Why? Because you, we are in this covenant, right? We already are in this covenant. Right? And this covenant was said to be forever or in the sense of lit olam, which really means the time indefinite to the most distant horizon. Right? It's the first party in the covenant that initiated, you know, this covenant with Yasharala Yisrael. That is the primary one. It's like if you violate your basic utilities or some other type of, you know, contract for water, gas, light, phone or something and you don't pay it on time, you can call and you can do what? You plea. Right? A lot of people be all bold. I don't plea. I don't beg nobody. But then if, you're, if your phone, your light going to be turned off and you know you're going to get your, some money in a day or so and they're going to turn it off like today, you're going to get on that phone. phone. You're going to get on that horn, right? The horn. Remember the Rams horn? You're going to get on that horn, right? You're going to get on that horn and you're going to be trying to negotiate, right? You know, trying to negotiate. Even if you're tough, you're going to soften it up some because you're trying to have that representative. So the representative on the phone line is like the priest, you know, or like somebody, a Levite, or somebody who worked for that system, right? And if you can, you know, make a, is it make a deal or make an arrangement or, you know, what it's called, like a payment plan, you know, or even try to get debt cancellation. You see what I'm saying? Get debt cancellation. To understand the context of the Hebrews, because you get the once you get the context and you understand these various different things and how they operate it, you'll be able to look in the so-called nowadays and nowadays reality and see the correspondence, right? And then also have the principle, right, and the formula. Understand the principle of the formula, how it works, especially in the spiritual, right, in the spiritual, right, in this uh, psychologically and spiritually evolved. Right? If you are able to be psychologically and spiritually evolved, the problem is there's, there's many carnal, fleshy minded, even believers. They still look at things in a carnal way. You know, like I leave this on the screen and some might be a little afraid of looking, may not be able to watch this particular vlog or video because they're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you, but you know what I'm saying? It be that way. Right? <laughs> So it's almost like the Baphomet sends them away into the wilderness. And so them sending it away. So them denying error out of mind, right? Putting away of khatiyat, of ukkari, of fukkari, putting fukkari away. Or, and, or releasing, something with a release from the consciousness, all be like Eve, right? All be like Eve, all that makes make believe, right? In and through khatiyat, through ukkari through lack, through forfeiture, and rah-rah, and evil, hurt, unkindness, and all condemnation, also the condemnation which brings about the guiltiness for khatiyat, for akri. Now see, when these things are not being able to be dealt with in, you say, counterfeit Christianity or religionism today, what do people do? People go to the drugs, right? People get caught up on the drugs, right? Isn't that what happens? People get caught up on the drugs, you know? Or they look for some form of escapism. Right? You keep running and running and running away, but they can't run away from their self. So it's interesting how when we talk about the scapegoat. Now notice, the scapegoat is for Kol Yisrael, this one goat 
right? That's being sent away with all of our uckery, our sins, our trans trespasses, our fuckeries, our moral perversities, our rebellions. All that is laid on this goat. So it's almost like we can point all fingers at this goat. But what people do today is they make scapegoats out of one another. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? They, they violate the covenant, especially among Yashirala and making scapegoats out of each other. You know, you make a one of scapegoat. And so if you own up for it, it's like I was saying in the free will video, people say like, they used to say the devil made me do it, right? Now some people are now flip mode and saying, well, God doesn't give me no free will. If I'm believing the Bible, I don't have no free will, right? And, and that's just possible. Maybe they don't because they're in captivity to that adversarial mind state. But even that is put away, right? That is put away. So we're looking at both the, the letter or the object lesson to hopefully explain the spirit, the elementals, you know what I mean, that's behind it, that are working in all of our lives and liberty. You see, we're, we're a long way from this so-called animal type. You know, we, we so-called Martin and, you know, people don't even know about the animals. If they deal with food, food or meat or debtors, they go to the store or somebody else, you know, cooks it up or they grow it, they prepare it, they slaughter it. People don't even, you know, people cut their finger, you know, get a little blood in their finger, they go crazy. You know what I mean? Because they're not used to these. But these are some of the realities of, 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 of life, especially for the ancient people. Right? So we can't just look at this in the sense, right? in, in, today's, in today's sense. Because scapegoat is usually defined as a person right, who is blamed or punished for someone else's misdeed. Right? One may look at this, but what is the punishment? Right? I say, what was the punishment? It's just being sent away. But we have to understand how in these ancient rites and rituals, how, how symbolic gestures... You know, they talk about sympathetic magic, symbolic gestures are important, right? Are very important. We can go through some example, modern day examples, but let's just try to seal this up right here, here, here. So we have, as far as the East is from the West, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. So we have Psalm, right? Psalm 103 and 12. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin will I remember no more. Right? Yeremiah, Jeremiah, Hermes, chapter 31, verse 34. Now we have to touch even a little more on the goat. Right? Generally. This we made this more about the scapegoat. Right? The scapegoat. And then also there's another reason man, about the goat of Jah, the goat of God, right? Vis-a-vis -vis the Baphomet. But now notice there were two goats. I want to say this again. There was the scapegoat, right? And you know, which is I like into the Caesar Bogiers, <laughs> if you're following, right? You know, um, and then there's the real goat, right? There's that real goat. Remember the the goat that was offered. It was a goat that was offered to Yahweh, Yahweh, right? Right. It's interesting, like putting hands on. You know, how sometimes when somebody's talking. And they try to put hands on somebody, almost like they're putting it into somebody and how we resist that. Even today, there is something to that. You know, there's still something to that that is deep in our psychology, right, that we know, right? So there's some more details of this. You know, we can get into the details. We want to explain a little bit more on the sacrificial system. Why was this sacrificial system instituted among Israel? You know, what was its ultimate purpose? You know, how was these sacrifices used as object lessons and how people, right, I say not the Israelites, but other people, even in ancient Egypt and Kemet, were already doing sacrifice for their own interpretive reasons, right? Some good, some not, that we have to deal with on a case-by-case -case basis to look into different kind of offerings because many people think there was only the animal offering. Right? There was the Ola, there was the Mincha, right? There was the Zeva Shalami, right? The peace offerings. There was the Chata'at, the sin offering. In, in context of the Day of Atonement, right? We are mainly dealing with the Chata'at, but there's also the Asham, right? The guilt offering. A basic word for offering is the Korban, right? There was also the blood that was on the Mizbeach, the altar. Right? There's certain key words we can touch on that right there. The Ola, the Ola offering, right? Certain operative words right here, Tamim, like to be without, you know, blemish, pure, right? Let's touch on that in another a follow up video, brothers and sisters. Because here we like to, 
you know, make this, um, there was a peer of goats. Let's keep in mind that there was a peer of goats, right? One was the Lord's goat or Jehovah's goat, and one was La Azazel. Now, often La Azazel, people connect with Satan, right? Now, we want to deal with the principles of these things and to avoid firstly dealing with the personification, because a lot of the personification, right, is an error, right? That's like pointing the finger, you know? And then when they point the finger, and you ask them why, you get to recognize they don't understand the principles. You know, it's like one is judging ones, and you're saying, on what law? And then they'll say their own law, which is not even law. It's just their feelings and emotion. It's their foolish heart, right? But there's consequences for that. You know what I mean? There's consequences. You know, there's a there's a divine balance. You know, the, there's the the like-for-like like principle. So Azazel, some will say Satan, there's a two goats. Right? There's a two goats, one, right? The goats are echad, but the goats are two uh, outwardly, but in the rite and the ritual here, they are echad, they are one, right? They are unity, even one might say a complex unity. They are a single korban, both of them, right? Both of them. So we just zoomed in on the Baphomet, the Lazazel one, but together the live one, Right, the live one for Azazel and the one that is slaught and presented like Yahweh, they are one. They are both appointed for death, right, at this particular point, right? But one's death is immediate, you know, one's death is immediate, while the others, right, while the others, right, is um, prolonged. Some of the Israelites in the wilderness, in a sense, remind me of that, this one in the wilderness. So it's the tail, right, the tail of the two goats. When we look at the tail of the two goats and we look at even the so-called counterfeit Christianity versus the truth, right, we see like the Caesar Bogiers, right? There's like the Caesar Bogiers, right? The whole Caesar Bogiers type, right? And then there's a true type, right? Remember that one had died right there, right then and there. The other one was going to be sent away and would probably, no doubt, eventually die or, you know, elsewhere, right? Basically, it was Lazazel, right? But then there was Yahweh's, right? There was Jehovah's, there was his, right? Which one was his, right? Which one was offered as his? So there we can see that Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, type. But then there was the other one, right, that was sent Lazazel, right? Lazazel. So here we're making a, a likeness of of our true black Lord and Savior, the, the, we can say the Christ, even the black Christ, and then speaking about the Antichrist, right? The whitewashed Antichrist, to make that contrast there. Because notice the whitewashed Antichrist, the Kaiser Khazar Borgia, right? And that whole thing went into a land that we can put in the context of the scripts that was not inhabited. A land that they at least did not inhabit it and had enough wilderness, even the wilderness of the Americas, North America, South America, right? And to a degree, the Caribbean in context with the revelation right here, here, here. So here we have in symbology, you know, a reason for the season, but it does connect, right? As we study hard Torah, right? It does connect with some of the basic, you know, the basic precepts. So here, 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 just to seal up right here, brothers and sisters, you know, on the two goats, right? Don't have a split screen right now to show. Want to take a split screen, you know, of our black Lord and Savior, right? And then also to touch on the Khazar, the Kaiser Borgia, right? Or the, um, which one was that? Which screen was that? It was this one right here. You know how they put this? Is that for that Mel Gibson movie. You know what I'm saying? So there's those two types. Why? I notice they put this on the one for the scapegoat. Why? The scapegoat right here. You know? And it says, he bore our sin. So let's reason on that, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Here, here, here. Just a full of full. Got to get ready for the eve. Gemar chat Tova. You know? May you be sealed for good sealing. A seal up. Seal up here, here, here. Why? So one goat. Why? Has been slaughtered. And Lazazel, goat, right, has left the building. And Haile him, the almighty power, almighty God, is in his tabernacle. Know ye not, 
right, that your bodies are the ta temple, right, of Hilahim, if his ruach, his spirit, be within you. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom, Gemar Chatama, Toba, Gemar Chatama, Tova.